Hello and welcome to this level 3 Mathematics in Context training video for Pearson at Excel. In this video we'll look at comparing data using the mean and standard deviation. This is the specification reference and we're going to focus on comparing the distributions of data sets and calculating and using variance and standard deviation. So the formula sheet gives us quite a lot of information for this topic, including the mean from a frequency distribution and also for a grouped frequency, which is the same, but a reminder that X is the mid interval value, often called the midpoint. There's the variance formula, so each value minus the mean squared, find the sum of that and divide by how many values there are to give you the variance. And then down here, the standard deviation is that same formula, but square rooted. There's an alternate formula here, which we'll talk about later. And similarly for the discrete frequency distribution. So if you've got group data, just using the Fs in there, the frequencies, and for how we do that. Think about for teaching this for mathematics in context. So you might want to use a context. For example, mobile phone usage, you could compare year 12 to year 13. Students can find their screen time in the battery settings of their phone. And maybe year 13s spend more time on their phone than year 12s, for example, on average. Or you might want to look specifically at different apps. Is there a particular app that's used more by one year group than the other on average for longer? And if you've got teachers that are willing to share their information, perhaps you could look into the hypothesis that students spend longer on screen than teachers do. You might want to look at some social media things. So students could collect data on the maybe the 10 most recently published posts by a celebrity of their choice and maybe compare the number of likes. So is there more variation between the less popular celebrities or is it more variable in the more popular celebrities? Maybe students are more interested in music, in which case they could look at some lesser well-known bands. Is it true that the more popular bands are more consistent in the number of likes they get? A further option is to compare the Office for National Statistics census data. So it's very customizable and students are often interested in finding out and using data about the area they live in. So you could get health data or employment data. You'll have to do a bit of digging to find the information there, but there is plenty of information and students do like finding out about where they live. So another look at that second method. This is probably the one that people are going to use when they're actually calculating standard deviation by hand. And this one talks about finding the squared values, find the sum of all of those and divide it by how many there are. So that's the mean of the squared values. And this is the sum of the x values divided by how many to the mean, and then it's squared. So this is sometimes remembered as being the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. And you've just got to watch out that that is the variance. So you square root it to give you the standard deviation. Let's take a look at an exam question. This one is from 2019. It was on paper two. Question two. So it's data about flight delays at Heathrow Airport in 2015. And this was pre-release information. So students saw this and have had been working on it for some time. So this information wasn't exactly new to them. And it is recreated here for them to use in table form. And you can see that part B, part I says, calculate an estimate for the mean delay. Now, there's a lot of columns here, and that often throws people off. They're not sure what to do with all of them. So I'll show you how I would use them. Because we've got grouped data, we want to work with the midpoints or the mid interval values. You can add them up and divide it by two to get your midpoints, and that's those ones. And then we want to multiply the frequency, the number of flights, by our midpoints. So frequency times midpoints gives you those values there. And then we want the sum of all of those, which is just over 8 million. So our estimated flight delay is the total number of minutes that we think they were delayed by, divided by the total number of flights, which is 17.91996 or 17.9. Look at the mark scheme. It's a four mark question. So there's one mark for finding at least four products of F times, well, meant to be the midpoint, but they're allowed to use any value for this method mark. For the second method mark, using correct midpoints, at least three correct midpoints shown. Third method mark is for dividing their fx by the total number of flights, and then the accuracy mark for the answer. 
The examiner's report says that this question was often done well with many students knowing what to do and showing it clearly and accurately with good use of the table. Many used the correct midpoints, but some divided by an incorrect value. So often students will divide by five because there's five rows in the table, but that's very wrong. And others just made arithmetical errors in their calculations and only got given part marks. Part B, part two says calculate an estimate for the standard deviation. So if we were carrying on, we'd already have those first two columns filled in from the last question. And you'll remember that standard deviation, the quickest way to do this by hand is to use the values squared. So we want these midpoints squared. That gives us these values here. And there's no point adding those up. What we need to do is we need to do the frequencies again, the frequencies multiplied by the midpoints squared. So that gives us quite large numbers. And the sum of all of those is this one here. And we're going to need these bottom three numbers, the total flights, the frequency times the midpoint, and the frequency times the midpoint squared to substitute into that formula we were looking at earlier. So this value here is the value squared multiplied by the frequency added up. So that was at the bottom right. This is the total number of flights, total number of flights there as well. And then this is the value we found uh, partway through workings in the first part. So substitute them in and gives you 28.57 Mark scheme for this one. So another method mark this time for multiplying the frequency by a value squared, a value in the interval, so you're especially using the points again, but they can use other ones to get the marks there, get the method mark. A second method mark for a complete method, they're allowed to follow through and use their previous answer to part B rather than finding the mean again. And accuracy mark for answers in the range 28.4 to 28.6. So the examiner's report will let us know that this question was not answered very well. Not many students knew how to calculate standard deviation correctly using this method. Uh, they were unsure about how to use the frequencies. And some students, although knew they had to do f times x squared, accidentally did fx and then squared that. And a lot of students just left this one blank. Part C asks us to compare the data. So it's claimed that since 2005, punctuality has improved and there's less variability. And here are some statistics for 2005. You might remember that the data we were looking at was 2015. So it's worth having that information back. The mean for 2015 was 17.9. And in 2005, it was 20.8. So it has decreased. The mean value has decreased from 20.8 to 17.9. And the standard deviation has also decreased what you need to do here is to answer the question, does the data support these claims? So the same punctuality has improved, it has, the mean has decreased, and the same variability has decreased, less variability, and that's also true, the standard deviation has gone down. So the data supports both of the claims. So mark scheme, one mark for a comment comparing the means and one for a comment comparing the standard deviation, but you can only get two marks if at least somewhere you have commented on whether it supports the claim or not. Let's see. So the examiner's report, many students had difficulty actually comparing them. It was quite common for students to get confused about which year was which there and saying it had actually gone up. And a lot of students lost the last mark for not commenting on the claims and just correctly compared the means but or and some deviations but didn't actually comment on whether it supported the claims. So some top tips. I would suggest, if possible, you can make use of genuine data when working with means and standard deviations. You want to give your students experience of working with grouped frequency tables. It's the most complicated part of it, so getting some practice at that. From time to time, make use of some big numbers. If it goes into the millions, that often confuses students and they just make transcript errors and write them down wrong. And if possible, get them to practice their conclusion writing. Multiple opportunities to do this will give them the best chance of scoring those marks. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful.